So let's first understand defensive CSR. This is the kind of CSR that we see in companies like Enron and Lehman Brothers, both of which you will know no longer exist, but both of which had CSR programs. So the question is, did the CSR programs in Enron or Lehman Brothers make them truly socially responsible? And what we see is that they did nothing to cancel out the culture of greed that existed in those organizations, by which I mean there was almost an exclusive focus on economic growth and profits and return to shareholders. So that even though they had some charitable contributions, some employee volunteering, it did nothing to change their fundamental unsustainability because it was all about the money. So that's one type of CSR, and I hope there aren't too many companies in Korea like this, but my experience is that these companies do exist. It's an obsession with shareholder returns and quarterly profits. The second approach perhaps you are more familiar with, charitable CSR in an age of philanthropy. This is the sort of thing we've seen from Bill Gates, and if you go back even further to Rockefeller in the United States. And it's a little bit like the cartoon says, giving something back to the community is a fine idea, just make sure you take a lot more out first. So it's the idea that you don't question how you make your money, so long as you're generous with giving it away once you've made your money. And for me, that's a fundamentally flawed logic because actually the impact that you have as a company over the life of the company is far bigger than any kind of contribution you can give back in terms of a donation. People forget that Rockefeller, who founded Standard Oil in the United States and is today remembered as one of the great philanthropists because he gave away almost all his wealth at the end of his life, he was a somewhat dubious or let's say unethical character as a businessman. He got involved in price fixing, cartels, collusion, was very aggressive in the market. At one point within four months in what was called the Cleveland Massacre, he drove 23 of his 26 competitors out of business. So shouldn't we be questioning how companies are making their money, not only whether they're generous once they've made their money. The third approach then is promotional CSR in an age of marketing. Like the cartoon here shows, this is a highly polluting company, lots of smoke coming out of the factory. So they invite the media to a press release and talk to them about their paper recycling program for the office, okay? It's what we also sometimes call greenwash or drawing attention to small positive things when in actual fact the overall impact of the company is very negative. Now when you ask CEOs, as the World Economic Forum does occasionally, why do they do CSR? Their answer is they do it for brand and reputation. So what that tells you is most CEOs are stuck in this age. They think it's only about marketing. This is also the danger of the reporting trend that we see. We've heard a number of times now about the Global Reporting Initiative. We see some very good reports. LG has got theirs available here. If we don't go beyond this stage, then it could be just about presenting a positive image to society. And some companies have got caught out. We know the story probably of BP changing their name, their logo, to Beyond Petroleum, which quite frankly is a joke, right? Because they've never gone beyond petroleum. The most they've ever invested in renewable energies is 4%, and that's been going down year on year. Of course, there was the Gulf oil spill. There's the investment in, in the Alberta tar sands, very 
carbon intensive. So for many years, BP, when I was uh, um, going through my career, was seen as a leading company in CSR, and they were very progressive. And then at some point, they went too far, and they decided to make this about an image and a promotion. So I think they went backwards. <laughs>